up you guys it's not seem here aka seem the dream aka nas tech and today i will be giving you guys my final analysis on the oneplus 8t and before i give you guys my final analysis on the oneplus 8t i only really have two final words to say about this device and it's okay and the reason that i say this is because there are some really great things about this phone that makes it a potential top tier flagship. And there are some bad things about this phone that stop it from being a top tier flagship. And before I tell you guys what I really liked about this phone, let's start off with the bad. Now, the simple fact that this phone is over $700, especially here in the US, and it's not waterproof is a huge letdown. And in my opinion, I feel like before you know all the cool tech things and the, you know just the cool things about tech your phone should really be practical and durable in day-to-day -day use situations like hear me out everyone uses their phone every single day what person do you know that's not near water you know just being in the bathroom or just having your drink near you while you're using your phone many occasions where you are near water where you could potentially drop your phone in water or spill water on your phone. And to be living in 2020, where we don't have a water resistant phone that is quote unquote flagship is very disappointing. And like I said, the fancy specs, they're cool. You know, just like that, that, that is kind of the reason that this phone is that price, but the main thing that smartphone developers should be worried about is can this phone be handled day-to-day -day use if not people aren't going to like your phone like if your phone is extremely fragile or not durable then that's a huge red flag no matter how cool it is and especially if we're paying 700 dollars like the google pixel 3a or the google pixel 4a that's much cheaper doesn't have to be water resistant for the simple fact that it's much cheaper so it's more easily replaceable and they want to make it you know the material is much cheaper where they just don't put it in which is fine but if you're charging people over 700 dollars it definitely needs to be waterproof for the simple fact that i've paid this much money so my phone should be as durable as 700 dollars is worth and another huge letdown for me was the simple fact that the oneplus 8t did not come with wireless charging and it was also very funny to me how they showed off their brand new Warp 65 charger, which, you know, just comes with this super fast charging and it's eliminating overnight charging. But it will also make people wonder, why not have that same fast charging with wireless? That was something that they focused on and improvement on, but it also just highlights another flaw within this phone. So for anyone who loves their wireless chargers and is up to date in the year of 2020 if you get this phone you're out of luck and finally my final major flaw within this phone is the fact that it does not have expandable storage now like i've always said before if you're not going to put expandable storage in a phone you should have at least 512 gigabytes worth of storage so that people who are storage hogs can have fun with this phone and as crazy as it sounds some people need much more storage than 256 gigabytes like the average person would be fine with that but there are some people out there who have tons of photos tons of videos just multiple things that they need to keep in their phone but this just has them out of luck and then i also have my nitpicks like the dongle not being in the box or the camera being good but not 700 dollars great and also the fact that it does not have a headphone jack and the extreme lack of colors that I've detailed in my past video. But despite my negative gripes about this phone, I really don't think it's a bad phone. Like in my day-to-day -day experience, this phone was actually very good compared to phones that I have reviewed in the past. Like I said, with the 120 Hertz refresh rate, it was just buttery smooth. It just had a lot of great things that made this a potentially great flagship and i was really impressed with the display on this thing especially when i was playing video games on it when i was watching movies on it when i was watching youtube on it it was just a very great experience as far as display goes 
and as far as the visuals. And the fact that it had most of the features of other Android phones, including an on-screen fingerprint sensor, facial recognition, and a beautiful display that made this phone just a great experience for me. And the main thing about this phone that really impressed me was the Warp 65 charger and how fast it charged the phone. Like when I tell you guys, I really did not need to charge my phone overnight. I really wasn't kidding. It would literally take me like 40 minutes max just to charge this phone, which was very impressive. And the fact that I didn't have to, you know, charge overnight. And the fact that I can monitor my phone, you know, while charging before I had to sleep was an extreme luxury that I really loved. And after my full day-to-day -day experience with the OnePlus 8T, I really had a great experience, but like I said, it's okay. And like I said in my previous video, it's a great phone and I feel like a lot of people will have fun with this, but I don't really feel like it's the best as far as the competition in that price range. But overall, it really was a great experience and whoever gets the phone, I really feel like you will enjoy the OnePlus 8T. So if you guys like my real review on the OnePlus 8T, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, show as much support to the channel as you can. It is very appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.